Tyler was right in front of us the entire time, and nobody seen it. Maybe it was too vague, but Oda left it there, and if you could have catch it, you could have caught it. Pretty much Scarlet, Violet, nobody saw the connection, names being color schemed, you know, the connection. I guess it was a bit too vague, yeah, it probably was for anybody to catch it, but if you did catch it, kudos to you regarding that. Pretty much Rebecca's mother, Scarlet. Is sisters with Violet, also known as Viola. Although, I guess she did take up the name Violet and she was actually originally Viola. So, in a sense, yeah, that wasn't actually the name that King Riku gave his daughter. But nonetheless, the connections is interesting. I'd imagine she took on the name Violet to pretty much honor her sister, maybe because her, her sister's name was Scarlet. So, you know, similarities, whatever with the name, whatnot. And it also makes sense. You know, it makes a lot of sense why Violet would go back there even after she was leaving them. And we find out in this chapter that she's King Riku's daughter. She's Rebecca's aunt. It makes perfect sense she's going back. Possibly she's going back to either get revenge and get Rebecca or just get Rebecca. Yo, I'm going to help you. She's probably been wanting to help her this entire time and seeing her with Dolphamingo's crew, you know, she had no choice or whatever. The chapter definitely put a lot of the pieces of the puzzle together because it was like, it was all right there and it's just like, who's Viola and oh, okay, that's Violet and what is her connection? Okay, that's King Riku's daughter, that's Rebecca's aunt. You know, it, it all makes sense. The pieces finally started adding up with this chapter. Of course, Virgo was quick to accept the mission. I mean, Dolphamingo, he thought of everything. The moment they called in the Marine Virgo's like, yo, okay, I'll help you. Don't worry about it. Oh, thank you, though, Flamingo, for being such a nice guy. It was like everything was orchestrated perfectly down to even the Marine call. That panel with all of Dolph Flamingo's people beautifully drawn. You get to see everybody. A younger baby five. You get to see Buffalo. You get to see all of them there. And it's like, okay, this is a reflection of Doflamingo's crew in general, and I like seeing that more. We're getting more revealing into Doflamingo's crew and who they are and what they look like. We get that young Monet. I love young Monet. Don't care if you gon' hate. I love some young Monet. Pre harpy at that, we get to see her and everything else. It's like, oh man, I, these past couple chapters, last week's chapter, this week's chapter, is like so maniacal, so diabolical. They. They were just brilliant with it. But I can't even lie. This chapter also is like, when this gets animated, I really hope they do it well. Seeing the people crying out in agony. Why is the king doing this to us? I thought he was an amazing person. Why would he do this? What You know, what's going on? It really is a sad thing in and of itself. It's like, yo, you're seeing your king that you just, all of y'all ran out to get money as soon as he said he needed money. And he's just coming and killing everybody. And then King Riku begging to be killed. It was beautifully done. Oda does like emotion when he wants to do emotion. You know, he, he sets aside emotion a lot of times. He likes to do the jokes. He likes to do the setting up, you know, the good writing. But when he does, does the emotion and you see all these people, he did it beautifully. It was beautifully done. To me right now, this is the tragic kingdom. And I understand why they would look at King Riku with a crooked eye. Anybody would. He's fucking coming, killing people. You're like, what's going on? And then when King Riku just whispered death in the shop, it was just like, yeah, this is really... Oda's doing some good shit with this. And aside from finishing up the flashback, getting to know a little bit more about that stuff, we got the whole Luffy thing as well with him pretty much meeting up with Zoro and Kine Mon. And of course, Bartolomeo, he couldn't stop foaming at the mouth of being just starstruck by Luffy, so he dipped off as well. So we got slight progression with that as well. For the most part, this chapter they didn't have too much progression. It mainly did the backstory with a lot of good stuff and emotion into it, and it's really like raw, and it gave you more pieces to the puzzle of who's connected to who. And then it also did a little bit of the ending with Luffy meeting up with Zoro Kinemon. I imagine he's gonna bust right out of there in the next week's chapter or something like that because he's gonna get pissed off hearing this. I can't forget Bellamy. Bellamy looked sinister in this chapter and the last time we saw him he was like confused. He was like conflicted. What should I do? Should I attack him? Should I not? In this one he looked with a sinister smile like if he made up his mind and he is going to attack Luffy. I mean, what could he possibly do unless he already sprung some sort of trap? Is he going to call the Marines? Is Fujitora going to show up now? What, like, what is he possibly going to do now that, you know, he feels like, okay, I got a lock on? I mean, at the end of the day, Bellamy, you, you, you try something to loopy, Bellamy, you're going to get fucked up. I'm telling you right now, Zoro's going to fuck you up, Kinemon's going to fuck you up, Luffy going to fuck you up, everybody's going to fuck you up. So, unless he springs some sort of trap, he calls the Marines... What is Bellamy really going to do? Overall, I felt this was a very good chapter. Very raw emotion. A lot of good stuff there. Not heavy on the progression as far as the current events. Like, I'm curious, yo, what the hell's been going on with Law? At, at the current moment, he's fighting Doflamingo. What's up with that? You know, a couple different things. What's Fujitora up to? Is he looking for Straw Hat? What is he going to do next? So, still a couple things like, wh where is everyone at? What's everyone doing current time? Because we did have a couple chapters of this flashback. Not too long, thankfully. And overall, it's like, 
not heavy on the progression, but everything else, it was just beautifully done. I'm going to give this one 8.5 out of 10. This was a very good chapter, yet again, of One Piece, de delivering that raw emotion. And when Oda does it, it's like, these are like nobodies, and I'm still feeling bad for them. These are nobodies all around. It's like, come on, King Riku's kingdom. Just a bunch of people crying out in agony about their king and King Riku himself. I'm just like... Oda, you're doing this so good. Let me know what you guys think. First of all, Bellamy, what is he going to be able to do to Luffy if he truly has made up his mind and attacking him? You think he's going to just slaughter him with like some sort of plan? He has a diabolical scheme? Or you think that it was just a misunderstanding, that look, and he's really like going to just tell him what's going on or something? I'd imagine it was a sinister look. And Violet, you think she was heading back to the kingdom to go look for Rebecca, even though she knows she's like fighting right now. So is she going to like try to take revenge. What is uh, Violet going to do right now? And just your overall thoughts of the chapter. Again, for me, it was heart-wrenching. It was very well done, beautifully done. Seeing King Riku at that emotion is like, he was a good man, and fuck Doflamingo for that. He's a, I love Doflamingo, but fuck him for being such a diabolical bastard. That's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up for all the scheming, crazy emotion, and everything that went into this chapter, because it was beautifully done. For that world, and as always, people, have an awesome day.